Hello one for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to hibernation, or in regards to suspended animation, or basically the state of minimal activity and metabolic depression that's present in a lot of different species, especially during relatively difficult months of the year, with I guess the most common example being a bear. But in this video we're going to be talking about some of the new advances and new experiments that might have discovered that this is also potentially possible in primates, achieved through a very specific chemical trigger by basically activating certain receptors in the brain. But also generally talk about some other facts and other discoveries in the last few months. And by the way, this is technically part 2. The part 1 of this video is available in the description below. Although in this case, this younger Anton was specifically discussing the idea discovered in some of the experiments conducted in Canada that focused on various types of squirrels that actually have these unusual bacteria inside their guts that could also serve as the potential trigger or actually potential support for hibernation in humans as well. But the study we're discussing today is a little bit more intriguing. First though, let's start with a few misconceptions. And naturally with a topic like this, there are going to be quite a few to cover, but I'm only going to mention some. For example, when it comes to bear hibernation, it's kind of surprising that it's only recently that the scientists officially confirmed that bears do hibernate. In the last few years it wasn't really clear if bears truly hibernated or if they were just sleeping in a very different way. But turns out that they are able to, for example, recycle their own urine during their prolonged sleep and are also able to lower metabolism and body temperature for a prolonged period of time. So in other words, they do hibernate after all. But the reason this was even questioned is because other animals, like for example bats, hibernate with a lot more extreme effects they can generally lower their temperatures even lower and they actually have quite a lot of recycling going on on the inside. And even though so many different mammals are able to hibernate, for some reason, the same is not true of primates, monkeys, apes, humans. And as a matter of fact, up until extremely recently, the scientists thought that primates, for some reason, do not hibernate at all. But as always, there was one exception discovered not so long ago. And this exception is a lemur on Madagascar. It's known as the fat-tailed dwarf lemur, and it's able to hibernate for up to 9 months. But more intriguingly, it hibernates for completely different reasons. Most animals known to us hibernate during winter, and usually because the conditions are really cold and there is just not enough food around. But these little guys do it for almost the opposite reasons. They hibernate when it gets too hot, and they seem to do so to avoid drought, suggesting that hibernation is not exclusively an adaptation to low temperatures, making these guys a kind of a double exception. They hibernate when it's hot, and they're also the only primates known to us to hibernate every single year. Intriguingly, that study that analyzed their hibernation patterns even discovered that depending on the outside temperature, and more specifically, depending on the temperature inside of their habitat, they will also experience different sleep patterns. Whenever the temperatures are much higher, they tend to have what's known as the REM sleep, they basically start dreaming. We can only guess what they dream about, but probably food and water. But when it gets a little bit colder, the sleeping patterns switch completely. Their body enters lower metabolism, and the REM sleep stops completely, along with a lot of other body activities as well. Which of course makes this animal an extremely important case study for a lot of hibernation research. But the more important question in hibernation has always been, okay, so a lot of animals do it, but can humans do it too? Or have we done it before, thousands of years ago, when we were a lot more primitive? Well, we can't really answer that second question yet, but we can try to answer the first question, and we can do so by possibly learning if we can hibernate other primates as well. Now here I actually wanted to mention that, as of today, there's no official case of humans hibernating that's been proven scientifically. There are, however, some anecdotal cases, like Carolina Olsen, also known as the Sleeper of Okno, who allegedly hibernated for 32 years. But there are a lot of things about her story that don't really add up. We'll maybe discuss her story sometime later. Either way though, it's not particularly interesting scientifically speaking. There's also some earlier research from the 90s that claimed to have induced hibernation in animals by injecting them with blood from other hibernating animals. But it was not very easily reproducible and so the actual conclusions were not super clear. But the main question is, can we actually induce it? Can we trigger hibernation in a more complex animal like a primate or a human? Well, some of the earlier research from the 90s claimed to have induced hibernation by injecting the blood from hibernating animals 
into other animals of the same species, but the results were not reproduced by everyone, so it's not clear if this is actually something that works. And more importantly, it's not clear what's actually causing the hibernation itself. Although quite importantly, some of this research discovered that there are different substances in the blood of hibernators that tend to produce something that protects organs for a long period of time. And some of these substances were even used to prolong a life of isolated pig's heart. Which means that, in theory, we could use these substances for transporting different organs during transplantation. The scientists have suggested this could increase transplantation time up to about 20 hours. And moreover, similar substances seem to kind of exist in primates and of course humans, which implies that our bodies technically can hibernate, with the question of course, how? Is there actually a way for us to maybe trigger it? And that's exactly what this new study was about. It was able to chemically trigger a state of hyperthermia by activating specific neurons in the preoptic area, also known as POA, of a group of different macaques. Animals whose brains are, to some extent, somewhat similar to ours structurally. And though obviously this wasn't a true state of hibernation, this was to some extent its cousin, or basically the beginning step of hibernation. And this was done by using the crab-eating macaques, whose brains were modified to have a very specific receptor inside hypothalamus. The tiny organ, sort of in the middle of our heads, responsible for various metabolic processes, but also responsible for things like body temperature and hunger. And then these macaques received a very specifically designed drug that would act on those receptors in hypothalamus, activating preoptic area cells. In other words, these drugs were specifically meant to trigger only those cells. And then by performing different types of analysis, including MRI, they were able to confirm that the activity inside these cells induced hyperthermia and a lot of other effects resembling initial stages of hibernation. Overall, their core temperature dropped dramatically, their heart rate also slowed down, they started to exhibit effects very similar to what we see in someone going through hyperthermia, and they even started to shiver. Okay, so maybe this doesn't sound very important yet, because basically it's like making these monkeys really, really cold. But there were definitely a lot of changes in the blood and changes in various substances that sort of resembled initial stages of hibernation in other animals. And so does this mean that we finally discovered what triggers it? Well, not really. As a matter of fact, the scientists mentioned that this is actually a little bit complicated. They performed a similar experiment on mice, and in mice, the heartbeat also slowed down, their metabolism dropped dramatically, and they kind of started to conserve more heat. In other words, in mice, it might really lead to hibernation. Yet in these macaques, the effects were almost the opposite. Their activity increased dramatically, and so did their heart rate. As I mentioned, they started shivering, and they basically started to attempt to create more heat. I guess a natural reaction to being cold. With the implications being that thermoregulation and hibernation in primates is definitely a much more complex topic than it is in other mammals such as mice. And though the scientists might have identified the first trigger to potentially induce hibernation, it's quite likely that it's not going to be as simple as just triggering a few cells. It's a lot more likely that this is going to be a super complex process, and we're obviously not even close to understanding what needs to be done for a human to hibernate through, for example, a very long space mission. Although in this case, the actual answers are probably still going to be in hypothalamus, as this is technically the main organ responsible for a lot of activity when it comes to regulation of body temperature and metabolism. And as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, this is going to be extremely important for any prolonged space travel. It would dramatically reduce the amount of material that we need to bring. It would also reduce the psychological and even physical pressure from being constantly awake and working in space. And more importantly, would also preserve our organs. For example, the muscles will not atrophy as much if the human is actually hibernating. And the same is true for our heart and a lot of other organs. Which means that hibernation research for space travel is probably one of the more important things we can focus on if we actually realistically want to send humans to Mars. Otherwise, after 6 to 9 months in space, a lot of astronauts unfortunately might develop too many health problems to be of any use for any mission on Mars. So definitely pretty exciting research and pretty exciting discoveries. But naturally just the first discoveries we've made so far and probably the first we're going to be making for the next few years. This type of research is extremely difficult to conduct, and especially because it would involve humans, and so it might take a very long time before we have a working solution 
to induce hibernation in human beings. But maybe this right here is the first step. But once we discover something else, I'll follow this up with the next video. I guess part 3. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.